Greetings, everyone. I'm Sister Nancy, and I am here with you for a Catholic lens, sharing the journey of Catholics in media. I'm a daughter of St. Paul, and I'm also a board member of Catholics in Media Associates, as well as the director of the Pauline Center for Media Studies. So you may be seeing this on all different platforms, and welcome. We're so glad you could be with us this evening. I have more than a special guest with me tonight. Uh, I'm so pleased to invite to this special series, A Catholic Lens, a dear friend of mine, and also a fellow board member of Catholics in Media Associates. Um, and I want you to all welcome now with me, my dear friend, Jonathan Rumi. Hello. Welcome, sister. Jonathan. Thank you, thank you for having me. How are you, sister? I'm doing awesome. It's so great to see you. It's been too long. <laughs> been way too long. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we're so happy you could be with us. And I know you're squeezing us in into many other things because you're very much in demand lately. Well, um, how could I not make room for my friends? If you don't uh, <laughs> for your friends, you won't have any. So. <laughs> well, you always have us as your friends. Daughters of St. Paul love you. Yes, and I love you guys. You, 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 you ladies have been so wonderfully supportive and and just um, just awesome friends to me. So I'm, I'm so blessed to to be in your company. Well, thank you, and thanks for joining us. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful conversation, everyone. We're going to just have a little un a conversation with Jonathan about his life as an actor, um, his experience on The Chosen, uh, this amazing uh, streaming TV series. And uh, but before we begin, we we always start with a prayer. So always this start with prayer. Catholics and Media Associates has. So let's begin with a prayer. And I have a prayer for us this evening that's going to be praying for true communication. Mm. So let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, our way, by washing the feet of your disciples. You provided a meaningful expression of your love for them. This gesture challenges us to look into our own lives and evaluate our love in light of yours. To be a true communicator, we need to empty ourselves in order to be filled with love for our brothers and sisters. Lead us to always more selfless giving may we realize that we will discover your face precisely in true communication and service to others. Jesus, our master, way, truth, and life, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. That was a beautiful yeah. prayer. I, it's from our book. <laughs> Live Christ in wow. Christ, prayers for the new evangelization. And because we work in media, obviously, as Daughters of St. Paul, known on social media as hashtag media nuns, uh, we write prayers and our founder has prayers on the media culture and mm. being indicators within the culture today. Where can so, people get that book, sister? Uh, well, you can get it from <laughs> Paul. Come on, I gotta, I'll give you a plug there. Yeah, I know. You're awesome. Paulinestore.com. <laughs> Paulinestore.com. Yeah. -E. Somebody's got to post that up there, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So these prayers uh, help us in, in the communication world and those who work in the media industry to really be true communicators. And mm -hmm. Jonathan, that's what you are. You're a true communicator of Christ. Not yeah. only because you play the, the Jesus and the Chosen. Quite pointedly a communicator of Christ in that way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But you're a communicator of Christ by how you love and treat others, how your, your presence that shows forth the truth, goodness, and beauty of God. Um, mm. Without ever even communicating the name of Jesus, true communicators do that by how we live our lives. And, um, and Jonathan, you're just an awesome example of that. And I know everybody who's watching live, which I know there are many <laughs> who are joining us, um, 
you're an example in so many ways for people of how to live that communication of Christ. Um, and I just wanted to start with a few questions. Sure. Something basic early on. How did you even want to become an actor? Where did that come from? Um, well, practically speaking, once I knew actually what an actor did and how to go about finding work as an actor, I, I didn't, I never really wanted to be an actor. I think, I think though the spirit of that, um, spirit of wanting to entertain and, and to make people laugh was always kind of within me. And I always had a, a knack for, um, for impressions and, um, voices and things like that. And so, uh, um, from the time I was a kid, I was just always imitating things and people. And, and I remember, I think I remember being, I mean, it tells you how old I am, but being a child and seeing president Reagan on television and being, and doing impressions of president Reagan and, <laughs> and people being people looking at me and saying, that's actually pretty good. You know, like for a kid, I'm like, Oh, that's, that's pretty good. I'm like, cool. And I kind of, I kind of had a, um, an ear for for that sort of thing and then after i got out of well while i was in college i studied acting as a prerequisite um, as a film major um i thought you know i think acting on screen or on stage was never going to be my thing i said if anything it would be you know maybe doing voices for for animation or or you know, things like that. Video games at the time weren't even, people weren't doing voices for video games. Now that's a huge thing. And it's a huge part of what I do as an actor when I'm not on cameras, I work on video games and now I'm doing some more animation and stuff. Um, so I thought maybe that would be, if anything, I would be cool with that. I'd be comfortable not being seen, but being heard and getting to kind of try out all the wacky voices in my head. Um, but little did I know that God had other plans, so. Yes, he did. Yes, and we'll be getting to that in a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, we have many other questions for you <laughs> before we even get there. But tell us a little bit about what led you to Hollywood. What led you to come to Los Angeles specifically? Because you are from New York, correct? Yeah, born and raised in New York City and the suburbs of New York. And um, the thing that led me to Los Angeles was quite literally after, you know, the decision to become an actor on camera um, full time. I had been uh, so once I actually I started getting some work as a voice artist very early on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then through the, the the same casting director that cast me in my first job as a, as a voice actor offered me an audition to be on camera for the uh, you know, music awards, I think in like in 2000. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I thought, well, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll, I'll try it. I was a little more comfortable, comfortable performing. And so I'm like, okay, let's, you know, I know what auditioning is now a little bit. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me see what an on camera audition is like. And, uh, I went into the, their offices at MTV in, in midtown Manhattan. Uh, I had to, uh, essentially, I think there were a few lines that I had to say, and then I had to kind of just like, kind of improvise some stuff. And then they just wanted to see me dance. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you mean? They're like, we're just gonna play some music, you know, just 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 so show some moves. And I didn't have any moves. My moves I wasn't known for my moves. I just I'm like, I'm a drummer. You know, I was a drummer, but I'm like, no, I always, I keep that behind the kit. I don't show that to people. That's sure. not. That doesn't come out in my body. So I was like, ah. Oh. So I'm just like, kind of awkwardly like. <laughs> I don't even know what I did. They're like, okay, thanks. I'm like, oh, and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. Well, I booked the job and I thought, what the, like, maybe, okay, maybe I should rethink my concept of, of what I think I should do as an actor. Mm -hmm. So after I did the job, it went really well. I worked with uh, Reverend Run from Run DMC. Mm -hmm. He was in the, uh, he was in the spot. He's like, you're pretty good at this, man. And I said, oh, thank you. So I thought, oh, well, well, Reverend runs I'm okay, so maybe I should actually, maybe I should look into this. And and as I was working in production, and I was working in the film industry as a location scout at the time, um, I I started to like, you know, submit my 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 headshot, my photo, and resume, which had nothing on it, to like casting directors for the movies I was scouting locations for. And they're like, oh yeah, because by the time I would finish scouting, the movie would then start production. I was usually involved in the pre-production phase, so I would know. 
you know, there would be a little bit of crossover. I would know who the casting directors were. And then by the time I was ready to leave, they would start filming. Mm-hmm. And so I'd drop off my, my headshot and resume and, and, uh, and occasionally I would get a call and be like, Hey, why don't you read for this role? And then I started booking small roles and some decent sized films and then, uh, slightly bigger projects, commercials came into play. I did a couple of, uh, my first stage shows. And once I did theater, and realized that you know I, this. Uh, I realized that acting was something that I really wanted to do. Um, I then had to make the decision, which came after the housing market collapse, mm-hmm. to reassess where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do with my life, and where I felt that I was meant to go. And I just felt God calling me to to examine you know the West Coast. And I thought, well, it wasn't as now I see it as God calling me. Then I was just like, well, you know, if you, I feel drawn to it, and if I really want to know what it's like to, if I really want to see if I got what it takes to make sure. it as an actor, you got to go to LA. If you want to be on film or in TV, you go to LA. If you want to be on Broadway, you stay in New York. Right. Broadway wasn't my thing, so I decided, okay, I'm going to come to LA, and then uh, I had a little bit of a uh, about a year delay setback. I had uh, some family stuff that came down, and I I had to just attend to that mm-hmm. and then pushed my uh my arrival by about a year and then ended up uh here in beginning of 2010 okay. and uh and started from scratch all over again right you know, my credits so yeah. they don't tell you that when you're going to la that like <laughs> get ready to start at the bottom right because you know you figure like oh my credits will transfer like literally like my my, my movie yeah. credits not 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 my college credits but my I figured my film credits and the TV credits would 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 interest somebody. And right. I, I, before I came to LA and moved officially, I did like this uh, this uh, like a, a a week long meet and greet with like thirty agents and managers, and I got mm-hmm. signed by one of them. So I was like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm on my way. Yeah. And then I got to LA, and I I I was with this agency for eight months without a single audition, without one audition on camera. I I got a couple of voiceover auditions, which I booked. One of them, which I booked, and then they canceled the show. They canceled the scene. They they scrapped the scene, so I didn't get to do that. Right. Uh, which was for Wizards of Waverly Place, which oh, is sure. my friend now, David Henry, who I probably would have met then, but I didn't meet him because I never. They never. They scrapped the scene, so I never got to do the job. Um, funny enough, well, eleven years later, we'd meet, and then, <laughs> uh, but I never got out, and I thought to myself, "Oh gosh!" And then once I left that agency, I was looking for other agents to work with and nobody would touch me they're like you don't have any credits i'm like i got a couple of tv credits a couple of film credits like, yeah, we don't it's not, it's not a series so nobody cares so uh yeah that that began the the eight year struggle before actually getting a break so and it, it's uh on our previous episode when we uh interviewed director ted melfi the director mm. of hidden figures and also of yeah. the starlings uh which is on netflix if you haven't seen it it's a great film Saint Vincent. Uh, Saint Vincent as well. That's his film. Yeah, I talked uh, to him when he was at Catholics of Media Associates, uh, the, the banquet that year that he was honored. Wow. Yes, it's brilliant. I mean, and he said the same thing. He's like, "Yep, I slept on couches when I went to L.A." So he says for years, uh, <laughs> that's how it yeah. starts. You start at the rung, at the lowest rung, and you work yourself. And you no work joke. And, Hashtag um, proof. And I, I. I I met Jonathan <laughs> long time ago, right? Long in the midst time. of some of that, right? In the midst of some of that that struggle, that time when it's it's just challenging. To, oh to yeah, you're in LA. It's, it's a difficult time. You right? know me from back when. <laughs> um, but it's awesome to see where you're and how things are for you right now. And that's the question we're going to be going to because I know all these people watching or watching you because they know you specifically from the TV streaming series, The Chosen. And before we get into it, I think it would be great to show the, maybe we'll just show the uh, trailer from season two, because now you're going to be planning season three soon. So we have to watch season two. So we're going to watch this little trailer. And for those who haven't seen The Chosen, this is going to give you an idea of what it's like and Jonathan's role as Jesus. Okay, so here we go. I'm preparing something to share with the world. 
these things will make sense to some, but not to others. I'm here to start a revolution. Care is for women, for the vulnerable. Blasphemy is not harmless. Well, the Pharisees were pretty upset. Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. They're martyrs with a persecution complex. Take me down to the water. I wanna kill him. Just take me down to the water. Do you want to be healed? <laughs> I have something that's open to all people. Get up and walk. If he was supposed to be healed, God would have done it himself. That's an interesting point. Your fame is spreading the good kind. You have certainly livened things up around here. World travels fast. Hello, cousin. My heart is yours. My life is yours. John the Baptizer was taken into custody. Jesus of Nazareth. We finally meet. David, Goliath. Maybe there is hope for the little. What we're doing here will last for generations. I want my people to participate in the healing of the world. I do not feel very much worthy. Who's worthy of anything? You. The one comfort we have is to know that we're doing it together. It's not now. When? I'm here to preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven. I make a way for people to access that kingdom. In this world, bones will still break. Hearts will still break. But in the end, yeah! the light will overcome darkness. Hey there, it's Dallas. I'm the creator of The Chosen, and if you haven't seen season one, or if you want to see season two, you got to get The Chosen app. It's free. It's easy. It connects directly to your streaming device. You don't even need a subscription. Go check it out. <laughs> we, oh, had to yeah. have that little, <laughs> we had to have that little piece of Dallas at the end, right? Yeah. Well, just, where do we find this, right? Where do you find it? Got to, got to know where to send people. That's right. That's right. Um, so let's talk about The Chosen. You know, That's it's cool. it's a series that has really taken off. And it's kind of amazing because it's a biblical series uh, that is liked by Catholics and Protestants alike, which is very unique in that, that sense. <laughs> um, and and what's so unique about it is it's a, it's a streaming series. So it's the first series in the life of Christ ever made. It's the only uh, crowdfunded series ever made, the largest crowdfunded series ever made. But what's so interesting is that Jonathan, this is my opinion personally, but I think there's such a blend that you bring to the role of Jesus, of the human side of Christ, but also always respecting the divine, mm. like always showing forth that there's something more to this person of Christ in this series. So um, how, how do you find playing Jesus? I mean, what does that mean to you? Well, thank you for, for the lovely um, uh, setup there and um, for watching the show and for, for having me on here to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, the, and, and for also pointing out, you know, that hopefully what my goal has been to show that balance between the human and the divine, um, on, on the paper, in the script, in, in the series, um, you know, it very much, it very much tries and endeavors to, to humanize 
uh, Christ and make him accessible in ways that we haven't seen depicted previously and in ways that are um, not, you know, not completely lucidly evident in scripture, you know, Jesus's personality. You don't really get a sense of his, you know, the humanity uh, of his personality. So, but we know being completely human, fully human and fully divine that he had to have a personality. It's just mm -hmm. part of being human. It's part of being human condition. You laugh, you dance, you cry, you, 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 uh, you know, you have fun, you have friends, you have, you know, sorrow, um, there's pain. So I, I think showing the, the human side of him has been um, so revelatory for so many people that mm -hmm. only had this one um, very stern uh, paternalistic uh, father figure, authoritative father figure that that was the, the 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 judge of all humanity, and which he is rightfully so. But but it's sort of stopping at that because that they didn't have uh, enough of a personal relationship to mm -hmm. to imagine what it might be like to to have you know, a, a father of humanity on earth living with us, bleeding with us, sweating with us. So for me, any opportunity I get through this very humanized um, portrayal and, and, and character sketch, uh, you know, in, in the series, um, any chance I get to, to, uh, to bring out the notes of divinity or moments or looks or glances or, or bring in the divine life. I, I for me, it's, it's, super um it's priority to have that present in everything in every scene whenever possible even while a human um i i, I do that do it to the best of my limited human abilities um but i can't really know what it's like to play divine or be divine i can just try to think those thoughts as i'm saying certain words mm -hmm. you know or or try to you know feel the weight of god's authority as I understand it, mm -hmm. um, as I'm saying certain lines on the page, and hopes hope that the, the you know the Holy Spirit kind of translates that experience to people watching, mm -hmm. and um, I th it seems like the Holy Spirit has been able to do that, uh, you know, uh, despite my my sort of efforts to just muck it up as a as just a very very flawed sinful human being uh, playing this this iconic um role uh so uh and and glory to god that that people have been able to to, to have that experience watching the show because it, that part it certainly doesn't come from anything that i'm doing it's just me trying to get out of the way and and um yeah do my best to just channel what what's there yeah That's actually Oh yeah, just just like how we prayed at the beginning, a communicator, mm. as we're letting Christ work it through us as an instrument, and that's what you do because that's what comes across in the show. And you know, you're you're a stage actor on the life. You've also played Jesus uh, mm. in the Passion Plays uh, as a stage actor and on film, so on the Chosen. Um, what's the difference for you? In playing it on stage, you know, in a passion play, or playing Jesus on on film. Um, well, the timeline is a lot shorter for the course of events, and also with the passion play, we're dealing with the events that we haven't uh, addressed in the series yet, which is his passion and death mm -hmm. and the crucifixion, mm -hmm. uh, and to some extent in the play, um, hints of the resurrection, um, but we don't. We, we've never dealt with the resurrected Christ, you know, on, on stage at this day, at this point. Um, so I think the thing, because it's, it's kind of hard to compare, I can, uh, because we're dealing with different time periods, but what I can compare is the experience of the theater, the live experience versus the, the film experience. And um, in a play, you're, you're sort of hopefully getting to enjoy the organic uh, um, uh, flow and um, progression of a character's arc or emotional life at the very least, and you're experiencing it in real time. And so you get to, you know, if, if, you're, um, if you're doing your job properly, if you're meant to be distraught and, and, 
and come out of that into a feeling of peace or whatever the, the is on the um, is in the script. You mm-hmm. you hopefully try to get to a point in the the craft and in the telling of the show where you're experiencing those emotional uh, those moments uh, freely and organically and in a progression and it's it's chronological and right. with TV and film uh, oftentimes it's never chronological sure. often it's, it's you're you're shooting the end before you shoot the beginning and you have to emotionally have the end figured out and know where the beginning starts and how you got there and then try to right. keep track of it when you're shooting things all out of sequence so um that is, uh, for me, that is the, the, the biggest difference between uh, film or TV and um, theater. And, and also you have the energy of the, uh, the audience to work off of sure. in, uh, a live theatrical production, which, which you don't get on television. You have a film crew, but it's a different thing. And sure. uh, I really miss theater because of that. You know, I haven't done theater since, since that last play we did. I think we did, last did it live in uh, 2019. Live. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so this year will be, you know, 2022 will be three years since I've done any live production. So I really, I miss theater a lot for that reason. Well, in, in one way, in season two, you did have a very large audience when you, on the we summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had that, experience yeah. out in Texas, right? It was in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. In the, the sermon on the mount. Yeah, the frozen chosen. We had the the, frozen everybody was there. Got about there. a couple thousand people out there. Is that right? Yeah, close to three thousand sure. people that yeah. were extras on the set that That's right. you were preaching to. So, yeah. how was that experience? Since you normally uh, have that kind of audience, but you had that. That was extraordinary. I mean, that's a that's a once twice in a lifetime because I kind of know where the storyline is going. They haven't. This isn't anything. That's not been publicly advertised. I mean, we're going to be doing the, the feeding of the five thousand for season three, yeah, season three, and uh, and now they're they're sort of raising money to to get people to be extras for that. And um, I think they're almost already, have, you know, I think you have to donate at a or you have to contribute at a certain level to be invited to be a, a, an extra for that scene. And I think they've already given out three thousand invitations out of five thousand. So the, the next one is even going to be even bigger. Um, and I, it's, it's unfathomable. It's, it's like, it's, I mean, it's cinema, it's recent cinema history because nobody's done anything like that in, in decades, you know, for like to have that many extras, you usually just, you know, digitally generated. You take CGI. 50 people, 100 people. Yeah. CGI just pop people in different play, do different yes. plates and the next thing, you know, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was overwhelming. There's a documentary on the app, uh, I think that that goes into that, that talks about you know that the scene, and for the test run for one of the uh, trial, um, yeah, basically like a, a rehearsal with the camera. We have this giant crane that kind of follows, and then it goes up over the tent, and you see uh, everyone um, like as as it was tracking me. I think for the rehearsal. Um, I opened the curtain for the first time to see everybody and it was, it was overwhelming. I had to just turn around for a second because I was just overwhelmed with the sight of it and just thinking like what I was doing and how, how blessed I was that God had put me in that position to get to reenact, you know, the, one of the most famous and important bits of scripture in all Christianity. Um, and so it was truly, um, yeah, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. That's awesome. I, uh, we're going to be inviting some of our viewers to post your questions oh, cool. uh, so, or any, uh, you know, thoughts you want to, to send to Jonathan. And um, so that'll be coming shortly, but I have one more question for you. Sure. Uh, before we go to all the questions that are being posted right now, <laughs> um, I have a question for you. Um, you're a deeply religious man. Uh, you pray uh, regularly with all your social media followers, and it's it's really heartwarming to see that, uh, to see uh, a public figure such as yourself, uh, an entertainer such as yourself, who prays publicly with people. Mm-hmm. And how how do you think? How does this affect your life personally, but also? How does this influence your life as an actor? Well, uh, 
I mean, it influences, it affects me greatly. Um, I will have to admit that, you know, in the last couple of months, I, I haven't been able to pray as regularly with fans and on my channels just because I'm, I'm committed to all these wonderful and beautiful events and, and experiences. And so, um, and just work when I'm here in Los Angeles, it, it becomes impossible to, to, to carve out the time to be able to do what I used to do. Yes. Um, in that way, but whenever I do get the opportunity, I will sit down and I'll kind of throw up the uh, the phone and and uh, and sometimes it's when I have these like um, uh, prayer challenges that I work do for the the Hallow app um, mm -hmm. that we'll we'll do we'll we'll sit and you know sit with one of the members of the team there and we'll we'll do a live prayer and, and that's kind of like oh I get to do that again and. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's it's something that I that gives me a lot of peace and a lot of uh, healing and a lot of comfort um, and I, I think I think in the world that we're living in now there are so many wounded people uh, and there's so much pain and there's so much suffering in the world especially with the with all of that just came out recently about the church in France and yes yes it's really heartbreaking how badly we need prayer yeah. um and and so it just forces me to to try to in whatever way I can as I can um if I'm not doing it whether or not I'm doing it even publicly to just say okay like there's no greater weapon that we have right now spiritually than prayer we're we're, we're exactly. we are and i've said this before we're, we're spiritual beings that live in in this earthly state and and god has allowed evil in the world to to be the ruler of this world and you see it you know you see it taking place everywhere and especially I mean, the church has been a target for 2,000 years. Satan's been trying to take down the church for 2,000 years. And what better way to do it right. than to create this most diabolical scheme? Yes. And, you know, and I see that and I'm like, you know, for anybody else that's watching and, and, and sees that, how, how can you not go like, well, I was thinking about trying to go to church, but not that church. I'm like, oh, that's... That's not the church. That's the enemy operating within the church using the broken human vessels. Right. We're all sinners. The, 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 the sinners within the church, we're all sinners, but using the weakest and most vulnerable sinners like marionettes yeah. to just do his bidding and to try to undermine the foundations of the church. And he's never going to win. He's never going to win. Yeah. But the never. damage is irreparable on so many levels. And so the least that we can do is is to just pray for the church, pray for the, the victims first and foremost, and those who have been so hurt, and 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 for for the leaders in the church that they yes. that they can root out all of those influences and um, and really try to just continue to to, to build healing back in into um, the foundations of of Christ's church. You know, uh, I, I mean. What, what do you say to people when, when they, they say to you, how does, how does God allow for this kind of thing? Especially when it's like children and minors, like, what do you say to people? Like what, I mean, I'm, I, and I'm asking you that just as a, for, for the advice, mm -hmm. like how, do you, how, how do we explain that? Why God even allows that, mm -hmm. especially in, in his church. Right. Well, why does God allow evil at all in the world. And that that is one of the big existential questions of humanity. Why is there yeah. even suffering in the world? And it it's, goes back to the recognition that there is evil and that there is the reality of the devil. Mm. And, and some people may diss that and say, oh, that, that's not real. Well, this kind of just proves that it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, this proves that there is evil and we as human beings, God leaves us free. God leaves us, gives us free will and gives us freedom to choose, to choose what is the best of who we are or to choose 
what the evil one is enticing us towards, which is to just fulfill our desires, basically our, our human desires. And God's like God's always offering us the grace at the same time to choose yeah. him, to choose the good, to be the best version of ourselves. And when we're the best version of ourselves, we are the most Christ-like because we are most hu authentically human. And Christ mm -hmm. shows us exactly what authentic humanity looks like. Yeah. He's divine, but he also shows us what authentic divinity is. So there is no excuse to give to anything and anyone in the church who perpetrates such violence and horror. Uh, but the only thing we can do is pray. Pray that we ourselves, we ourselves are choosing always to follow the way of grace. And be lights for those who, who maybe exactly. have been broken by, by those that are in those positions of authorities and, and to- Absolutely, and to pray, and to, to pray be, always for them. Yeah. And to ask for forgiveness. Even mm -hmm. though we're not the perpetrators personally, we can ask forgiveness from the church as a whole. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what Pope Francis gives us as an example as. He asks for forgiveness for things he hasn't done, but that the church has done for all its history. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And that's awesome. and that's that's what we can be. We can be that presence of grace. And um I know so many people on this channel right now who are follow you on your prayer channel are saying what a resource you have been for them during this mm -hmm. pandemic, especially. And they're so grateful for your time of prayer. And um, so I'd like to invite Tim on. And Tim O'Neill is also a Catholics and Media Associate. Uh, Tim, welcome. Hello. Thank you. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Sister Nancy. Hi, Tim. Welcome, Tim. And uh, Tim has been like, checking out all the questions and comments that have been coming through. And so, Tim, can you pull out a few questions for us? Absolutely. Don well, I first have to say the, uh, the comments have all been an outpouring of love and appreciation, not just for The Chosen, but for what you're doing on social media, Jonathan. Uh, it's just overwhelming and wonderful to see how everyone is responding. Um, we, have, we have a question from Kathy Mullen. Uh, via social media, how do you, this is a question for both of you, how do you both think that we, the church, can do better in the media world, which would be, you know, in regard to both film and television, in general print? Sister, you take this. Oh. Come on now. Oh, man, this is about you, not about me, but, you know. <laughs> You're part of the media, sister. The question is for both of you. Why don't you both, both take a, both take a shot? How can we be in the presence of, of, Race. How do you both think we can do better in the media world? How can we improve in the media world? Uh, be who we are. Uh, Honestly, be right. who we are. I think the most important thing in our culture now is to be authentic Christians. Mm. And, you know, we're all struggling. As we said, we're all sinners. But we're all struggling to, to choose the good, to be Christ's presence in the world. And I think just being authentically that communicates more than we can even imagine. And and what can we do? You know what? Just be there. Be present on, on the media and every form of media. And Catholics, tell some really good stories, right? And yes. you don't even have to preach Jesus. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> but you don't even have to be preaching Jesus necessarily. You can tell really good stories. Stories yeah. that communicate authentic humanity the goodness in humanity, forgiveness, love, reconciliation, mercy, compassion. Those are what it shows to be authentically human, authentically Christian. Right, Jonathan? Yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must have another comment to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, the only the other thing I would add to that is that, you know, uh, those of us in the media, how, how could, you know, how could we... Um, I think, I think by, by just being, by using the gifts that we've been given, um, and if you're in the media, apply them to the media and try to be the best version of a person of faith in the media. And, you know, for me, it's like playing Jesus is one thing. Um, it's not the only role um, I'm going to play uh, or that I am playing. 
And not all the roles will be uh, anywhere remotely as good as the character of Jesus. Um, not just qualitatively, but I mean, like, you know, in, in who they are as people, as characters in a piece of entertainment. Sure. Um, some of them will have uh, massive flaws. Some of them might be bad guys. Um, but still, how I live my life off screen, um, publicly, mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a person of faith, as a Catholic, as a Christian, um, I think just speaks just as loudly, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to kind of be that presence of Christ in, in the media, uh, off screen, as well as on screen, in my case, literally as Christ. Absolutely. That's Thank great. you. Sure. We have a question from uh, Jill Self, and she uh, has an interesting question. How do you, Jonathan, how do you handle the lack of privacy, uh, lack of freedom, uh, a loss of downtime uh, that you've lost with the popularity of The Chosen? Um, I'm learning on the job. Uh, <laughs> nobody gives you a handbook on yeah. celebrity. Yeah. Uh, there's no real kind of like end point where you like cross the finish line. Somebody's like, all right, you're a celebrity now, a celebrity now. Here you go. Here's a, here's a book, read this. So you'll know what to do. No, it just yeah. starts to kind of slowly happen at times. And next thing you know, uh, you know, people are kind of helping you get to a car because there's no other way to do it on your own, you know? And, and for me, when I've been at, um, these events where there's a, a heavy Christian and Catholic presence. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that obviously know me from, from my work and, and from my prayer time and, um, and people want to share with me, which I'm so graced by and so humbled by. Um, but when there's, you know, a couple of hundred people in a line, it, it makes it very, very difficult to try to get to all those people. And I'm the kind of person where I, I will spend time with people. I, I, I like to listen to people. I like to hear people. I want people to know that um, even if I'm not meeting you, that I, I, I appreciate you and I, I respect you and, and your journeys. And, and because I, I've been there myself. And um, and so we're, we're all on this big rock together. And so I, I'm happy to give my time. But it's at a point now where when I do certain events, I just I, I, I physically can't give enough time to everybody so it's kind it's kind of difficult uh, in a lot of ways um and so i think that's one of the reasons why i'm not online so often is because i it, i've just been traveling so much and doing all these kinds of things so um you know but i still read comments i still you know will comment on things from time to time so know that um, um I'm, I'm seeing some of the messages i'm not really reading um, mailbox, ma you know, ma direct mail sent to me very much anymore. It's just, it's, there's just too much of it. Um, mm -hmm. but I do see comments and, and, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for all your love and support and encouragement. And, and, um, I love every one of you out there. So thank you so much for all that you've given to me. That's Great. Awesome. That's really wonderful. Uh, there's been a few, uh, comments, um, in regard, I'm going to try to combine this into sort of one question. Um, Watching the show when uh, Jesus performs a miracle, we see something we haven't seen in portrayals of Jesus. Uh, when he performs a miracle, he smiles. And there's a, there, there's a sense of uh, joy. There is a sense of, especially with the uh, disciples, there's a sense of camaraderie and there's a sense of humor that Jesus has that we haven't seen. Can you talk about this? portrayal that's so unique to what we've seen in other portrayals of Jesus? Sure. Thank you for that question. Uh, um, you know, I mean, you go back to Genesis, you know, the Lord does any number of things on six days. And at the end of the day, he sees that it is good. And so he takes delight. I think God takes delight in his creations. God takes delight in seeing his creations take delight in their lives that he has given to them. So I, I, I firmly believe that the God of the universe that made himself manifest in flesh and blood on this earth 2000 years ago was given an opportunity to, to kind of, to kind of, you know, 
sit amongst the flock and smell like a sheep. I'm like, oh, so this is what they're like, you know? And it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, well, I'm here. I'm doing it. Like we're, I'm in the mud with them, you know? And so, uh, I mean, it's now, it's not this untouchable um, God that is completely like, because we would not be able to withstand physical communication with God on the earthly level. Now he's in a form where he can have that with people mm -hmm. and he can demonstrate that his love for us mm -hmm. physically yeah. and, and, you know, intimately and personally mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately divinely by his act, his final act on, on the cross and resurrection, um, showing just how much he loved us. Right. But how, how could you, you could not have a complete human experience without any of those things that people are seeing for the first time in um, in this series. And the thing that I point out is that we have the luxury of time where most other depictions, you don't have that time. You don't, if you were doing a movie, you've got two, two and a half hours tops. If it's an extended cut, three hours. If it's a mini series, four to six, 10 hours. You know, if it's a TV series, well, this is uncharted territory. So it's like, well, what are we going to fill the time with? Because there's only one paragraph about this, <laughs> this exchange with, you know, Nathaniel or whatever. And like, who was Nathaniel? What was his life like? And how would it have looked like being on the road with Jesus for three years? Must have right. looked like something. And so mm -hmm. we're just saying, this is what we think the something may have looked like. Yeah. And it's, it's in the spirit of the Gospels. It's not tr contradicting the spirit of Scripture. It's all endeavoring to support the spirit of the Scripture not trying to replace scriptures as we know it's not trying to you know say this is what really happened in the gospels you know what we're saying no we're we're taking what's there and we're basing a show around it and it's a tv show at the end of the day right. people remember, it's a tv show but i think right. what people are responding to what people are reacting to is the truth of christ that they right. see that they receive from the show the truth of the holy spirit yes echoing within their own spirit and saying ah oh, i recognize that because it's true yeah. and it's beautiful yes. and Good. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's creative license because this is art, you know, the creative right. art of filmmaking or television. Uh, it, it's an art. And so we have to kind of fill in the storyline. But uh, I think what The Chosen has done is so beautifully filled in that storyline that makes everyone that we know from the Gospels human and relatable. And I think that's what's so unique about it. You feel like Oh, I'm getting, you know, kind of like when we watch a TV, a streaming series and you're like, oh, you get to feel with the character and you get to, yeah. oh, what's going to happen next? You know, um, yeah. you know down to Nabby, everyone wanted to know what happened next, you know, and, 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 you know, why did Matthew die? Oh, no. I remember one sister in the comments, she was like, all distressed that Matthew died. And like, <laughs> but we, we relate to the characters. And I think that's what's so wonderful about The Chosen is we're starting to relate to the characters of the scripture. Mm in a new yeah. way and, awesome. a, and, and you know it says it's not a replacement for reading scripture but it supplements our spiritual life that's right it's all meant to supplement you know and yeah. and uh it's like how catholics see the sacramentals and and you know things that sort of help get us to you know um broaden our our spiritual life and and uh you know increase our our prayer life and and, and our our time spent with god i think it's it's, it all brings us to the same place. And of course, that being, you know, Jesus is the center of, of everything. Amen. Amen. And he is the light. <laughs> absolutely is. We have a question from Peter Hill that echoes a lot of the general comments that people have been making about how they respond to the show. And I think, I think it's a really uh, uh, a good question for you. Uh, what is the most touching moment you have experienced since taking the role of Jesus? Oh, I think it's meeting people in person. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just in Philadelphia a couple of weekends ago for this Catholic um, faith and music festival called Abbey Fest. Yeah. And uh, a, a number of fans were there and, and a number of people that love the show. Um, I got to meet a number of them and pray with a few of them. And um, just some of the reactions were just overwhelming and, and 
people breaking down and like what how their relationship with Christ has been um, just uh, blossomed since discovering the show and just informed and, and uh, informed how, how their understanding of, of Jesus and who he was and what he might have really been like as a human. And, and uh, it's overwhelming for them, which becomes mm -hmm. overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, it's, it's really, it's kind of, I don't think I'm going to really, I feel the impact in the moment, but I think until I'm away from it for a while, mm -hmm. Will I? Because I'm in the middle of it. And sometimes when you're in the middle of the storm, you can't see how just how big the storm is, right? Uh, and, and in a positive sense, it's like the impact of this. I don't think I'll quite understand the impact of of what this is doing for people until I step step away from it for a little while. Because uh, right now it's 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 intense, and it's like, I'm like where am I going? Where am I going next? <laughs> uh, and it's like these 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 explosions of intensity along this journey, you know, which have been utterly humbling. So it's been awesome. um, meeting people in person. It's just been overwhelming. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I, we're now um, coming to uh, towards the end and I, we've kind of mm -hmm. gone over time a little bit, but um, um, you know, cause we don't get to talk to you so often, Jonathan. So I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hang more and I'd come by the, the store. And, and, uh, That's okay. Um, I know there's been several other questions. And Tim, I don't know if you have one, but there's one last one that I know some, several people have asked. And that's like, what's after this? Like, what's after The Chosen or yep. for you? Yep. Well, more Chosen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, after okay. season seven, I, I, I can't, I can't say what's going to happen after season seven um or is anything else still com is coming up in between oh you? yeah yeah um <laughs> there's some so there's some of these projects that i alluded to earlier these uh, animation projects that uh i'm probably going to be dropping some information about in the next couple of days um i know they're starting to announce these projects now that are very very different from the chosen um um one of them is uh, is outrageous. It's just outlandish, but it's by uh, it's produced by um, a very well known Catholic producer. So um, I, I hope that uh, because it's completely different to what people are I think used to, what my current fans are used to seeing that me do. Um, you know, there's there's some language and things like that, and I just have to remind people that I am an actor. And I do work outside of projects relating to Jesus and <laughs> hope people can just uh, have, uh, give me a little bit of grace if they don't necessarily, um, you know, uh, if that's not their cup of tea, but I have some really fun stuff that I think will make people laugh and uh, have a good time. And uh, uh, that I'm looking forward to uh, talking about. So uh, very, very soon, actually sooner than I thought. So, Oh. Um, yeah, so a couple of animation projects, uh, some video games that I can't talk about just yet. Yeah. I might be doing a movie at some point. So um, yeah, once once it's out in the trades, then I can talk about it. Well, you know, we always pray for you. Thank you. That always in our else, I'll right, take right. all the prayers I can. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I pray for you, you guys as well. You guys have been so instrumental. You keep you keep those of us in media, especially. Uh, and the, not media, but you know, you keep those of us, especially in the media, really buoyed by all of the prayers and stuff. And and uh, I'm just so grateful for you and, and for all the daughters of St. Paul and 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 for Sima for um, for being just a, a champion of, of Catholics and media. You know, um, there's a number of us out there, and and I think if we can kind of galvanize and and, and join forces, and and um, we could have a real uh, a substantial impact on our culture, uh, a culture that right now so readily glorifies the demonic. Uh, it's, it's crazy how, how uh, available, uh, you know, these, these themes and this imagery is now of the, of the demonic and the dark and, the, you know, the, yeah. the, you know uh, it's like, I've never seen anything like it. So it's, it's yes. all the prayers from, from every one of you watching now, for those of us working in the media for lighter forces to prevail within yes. culture, within media, to celebrate and support 
all these kinds of projects that support the light. Um, you know, uh, films like the Jesus music by my, you know, my friend, the Irwin brothers just did that. If you can go see that it's in limited release right now. And like supporting your Christian musicians and artists and just, you know, really getting more of the light out there in the culture, because that's how you change the cultures through the media. You know, Amen. media has such a huge impact on the culture. So the more light we can get out there to snuff out the darkness, the better, the stronger that's we'll be right. as a as society. And we can transform the culture just by being who we are. Amen. 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 And Tim, we're going to share a little bit about the next in this series, A Catholic Lens. I'm going to bring this right up. I'm going to share a little oh, bit about this. Hi again. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Another dear amazing. friend. Coming up next on November 4th at 6 p.m. Pacific time, join us for a live stream conversation with Megan Harrington, a talented documentary writer and producer for Family Theater Productions. Her latest film is The House That Rob Built, about the legendary women's basketball coach Rob Selvig from the University of Montana. And also be sure to check out last month's conversation with Ted Melfi. You can also see uh, his current film, The Starling, currently streaming on Netflix. Amen. Yes, we awesome. have such wonderful things coming and uh, in this series. So we are so happy to have had Jonathan with us this evening. And you're just, you're a light to so many people and you're a light to, to me personally, but to all of us at Catholics and Media Associates, uh, you're a great friend and a great associate. And um, we love you. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> thank you, thank Jonathan. you guys so much. It's thank an honor. You. Thank you. God bless you. See you soon. God Bye, guys. You. Thank you. Bye. And thanks for everybody for joining us this evening for this wonderful conversation with Jonathan Rumi uh, from Jesus from The Chosen, if that's how you know him. Uh, and stay tuned for next month when we have more in A Catholic Lens sharing the journey of Catholics in media. Thanks so much to all of you for joining us. God bless you. God bless.